G'day, it's Rob here again. In this video I'm going to do a follow-up to my last video which uh, went through the basics of using collets and uh, explaining their benefits uh, on a small metal lathe. So uh, this video will deal with the headstock which is the, the working end of the lathe. In the last video I pointed out how um, collets can uh, offer a lot even on the tailstock side of things but today we're looking at the headstock and uh, when you view a collet chuck, in essence it's, it's just a very small version of, it's just another chuck basically, except it grips the, the, uh, the work differently, it grips it uh, a lot better, um, it's, very, it's very accurate. And so, you know, if you've got a little lathe and you're, you know, you're quite happy to swap the three-jaw chuck for the four-jaw um, and swapping a three-door or four-jaw for a collet chuck is it's just another chuck. So I think people get hung up on collets that, you know, they're all pretty sophisticated and outside of the realm of the average uh, backyard basher. But uh, no, um, view them as uh, just another chuck and uh, you learn to live with them uh, and accept them, I think, a bit more. So uh, what we have to do is first off, take off the existing chuck, and then we're ready to look at the options on fitting a collet chuck uh, in its place. Okay, so chuck's off. What have we got left? We've got the end of the spindle with the backing plate built into it, which is uh, what uh, most of the small Chinese lathes have got. Um, when you get really small uh, European lathes like Emco's and that, they, they could have threaded noses. But uh, on the Asian side of things, it's nearly all built in backing plate, like something like this. And there's your Morse taper in the end of the spindle. And here's your collet chuck. And it just, it just fits in, the taper locates it. And then you have a a threaded rod uh, with a, a centering device on the end for, so it will centre in the spindle and a nut on the end. That goes through the, that goes through the headstock spindle, uh, screws into the back of the, of the, uh, the Morse taper and you're good to go. That's the most common setup um, that, you'll, that you'll find um, that people use. The downside of that setup is that you can't feed through the centre of the spindle because the bolt's in the way. You can buy these uh, if you hunt around with a thread on the on the outside, which lets you thread a tube on. So that way you you draw you use a draw tube rather than the draw bar, much in the way as the same method as the old Chorblin uses. And of course, that being a tube, that lets you then feed through the the centre of the chuck and down the tube. But as I said, most people, most uh, cheap systems just use the, the plain uh, draw rod or draw, draw bar, with, and uh, that works fine. Now, alternatives. The alternative way of mounting this is that you can actually buy a collet chuck with a big metal plate on the back, which then mates with your backing plate on your spindle, much the same way as a chuck. Uh, that way, you still you know, you have the benefit uh, that way of having feed through as well because there's nothing at the back of the at the back of the chuck. You've just got that plate, so it centres and you, it works just like a like a conventional three or four jaw chuck. The other uh, mounting method, uh, as I pointed out, is a threaded spindle. And if you look at the video on my uh, uh, the collet uh, mount I made for my old Shoblin 102, you'll see that they just screw on. Once again, they have the advantage that you can feed through because there's no bolt that they thread onto the nose of the spindle and uh, um, they work that way. So, that's that angle covered. Okay, so now we'll head to the other end of the headstock and we'll look at the drive enclosure end, uh, the other end of the spindle, and uh, we'll put in our drawbar and uh, I'll discuss a couple of points uh, regarding drawbars. Right, well here we are at the other end of the uh, drive enclosure, you can see the end of the spindle, here's our threaded shaft, um, and in this case it's just a piece of uh, 
threaded rod that I got from the hardware store and just welded a nut on the end, turned up a step collar. The step collar basically fits inside the spindle and bears up against the back of the spindle. So um, it's all self -cent it's all centred. You can use a cone, a cone shaped centering device to fit in there. So the cone would go in, doesn't have a shoulder as such. Uh, I don't particularly like that idea. I'm always worried about cones going into tubes, flaring the end of the tube possibly. I mean, it doesn't have to go much. Uh, and uh, down the track, you could have trouble getting your bearings off if you want to replace the bearings. So I like to step collar that way that there's no possibility of that happening. So we put it in, put in our bar, put it up. Once again, you could make up a, you could thread your own bar or you can buy them. It's up to you. Now when you do these up, you don't have to go crazy doing it up. You just put your wrench on and at the other end on the, uh, on the chuck and you pull it up and until you get a bit of resistance and you just go no more, no more than a quarter of a turn because if you do it up too tight, you're going to have a hell of a job getting the... Uh, um, the collet chuck out of the spindle afterwards because the taper will lock it in. Okay, so that's all there is to it. You're good to go now. When it comes time to take the uh, the collet chuck out again, when you finish using it, you basically just reverse the procedure. You put your shifters on, you undo the nut on the end of your drawbar, you unscrew it a quarter of an inch, and then you have to get a a hammer or a mallet and you have to tap on the end of that shaft, that drawbar, to knock the the uh, Morse taper out of its mount in, in the uh, other end of the spindle. That's okay, uh, but, uh, and, I mean, and that's why I said don't do it up too tight, because if, if you do do it up tight you're going to have to hammer um, hard on the end of the, on the, end of the uh, drawbar and that's a bad thing. Also, when you tap on the end of the drawbar, make sure you turn the the spindle at the same time. Don't hit it in the same place every time was a chance you could bruise the, the bearings. I mean, because when you hit on on that shaft, you're transferring all that force uh, through the through the taper onto the uh, onto the, uh, the the primarily the rear spindle bearing um, because that's basically a taper going inwards at this end. So the best thing, make sure you turn the spindle and uh, just tap away. What I do is I basically just start the lathe up and let it spin with the uh, with the bolt loose and then just tap on it like this. There she goes. Easy as that. Doing it that way you've got no problem with uh, with bruising the uh, the bearings or the rollers, okay? So that's it, then you just undo your, uh, your shaft and uh, take out the uh, the shaft and the uh, Collet shut, easy as that. And uh, just, just a matter of then, put back your uh, normal chuck and uh, it's business as usual. So there we have it. Uh, there's not much to collets. It's uh, not as uh, high tech as you uh, tend to think. All you have to do is get yourself a, uh, a suitable collet chuck of the correct size for your spindle bore, knock up a uh, your drawbar uh, with a centering device and go and buy yourself a bunch of collets. Now when you do buy collets get as big a set as you can and that way you'll find that uh, they'll be better to use than uh, getting by like I did originally and I still do to a part with I've only got a reduced set here I mean they'll pull down a lot but it's, it's better having the intermediate sizes having the complete set that way um, you find you can get stuff in and out of the collets a lot easier but that's it, folks. Great addition to your, uh, to your lathe. You can hold stuff more securely. You can hold stuff more gently. You can uh, uh, get in close because it's very compact. You can do a lot of things you can't do with a, with a normal three and four jaw type chuck. That's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, that's it for now. See ya. Cheers.